are watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. Yay! Hi, I'm Sarah Connor, and you're watching Life in Style with Sarah. On tonight's show, we're going to tackle one of parenting's most challenging problems, making healthy snacks and lunches to send to your, with your kids to school that they'll actually eat once they get there. My guest is Suzanne DeRosa. She is the owner of The Little Green Tambourine, a healthy living creative arts studio out in Canton, Connecticut. And she is going to help us figure out some strategies to tackle this problem, and we're going to do a few recipes. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about healthy is kind of a broad category. So yes. when we're thinking of healthy snacks, healthy lunches, what, um, what, should we, what should our goal be? Our goal is really just to accomplish um, what we're trying to do with a snack anyway, which is basically give the kids a little boost that they need in the middle of the day in between their meal. So. Um, Sometimes it seems, you know, oh my gosh, the snack, not, you know, it's got to be healthy. It doesn't have to be huge. Portion mm -hmm. size is important. Um, sometimes it's about healthier, taking those little steps. Right. Um, so it might be a, a slight change from one choice to another. Exactly. You know, you would try to make it so that it gives them a little bit of energy, something with protein, you know, something, maybe something um, with calcium, you know, mm -hmm. try to get something in there. If you can. Okay. Yeah. I had read um, there was an article uh, actually at the beginning of the school year by a, a nutritionist in the West Hartford News or one of our local papers, and it said lunches should have a quarter protein, um, a quarter uh, starch or, right. or, or grain, mm -hmm. and then half fruits and vegetables. Right. And I think the half fruits and vegetables is the biggest challenge. <laughs> it definitely is. Um, and I think if you take it too literally, if you miss one day, don't beat yourself up. It's not all or nothing. You can make it up at dinner time. You know, you can throw in a smoothie during the day. Um, but yet, it kind of have that balance. Also, sometimes they say the more color their lunch has, the better. You know, if it's all beige, it's pretty much all starch. Mm -hmm. You know, so you try to little bit. Yeah, try to get a little bit of variety. Um, as I said, smoothies have been the easiest way for me to get my kids, my. Um, middle son to have his um, fruits because he doesn't like fruits. Yeah. So smoothies have so been, you can mix them yep, in and, I'll, and sometimes that'll be his, his lunch and then he'll have side dishes with it or it'll okay. be his snack depending on you know what breakfast he had or what I'm making for dinner and just kind of balance it. Um, so balance. Is a, balance is, a is huge. You know they like variety too. So One of the challenges that I know I have is um, the kids, you know I may pack a lunch that they like but they don't have time to eat it. Right. Um, or they might get comments from other kids what they're eating, or they might rather have what someone sitting next to them is eating. Right. <laughs> I think we all, even yeah. as adults, go through that with their lunches. Um, you know, that's, that's difficult, but having them be a part of making it can kind of make it a little easier for them because then they're prepared to deal with whatever, right. you, know. Um, you know. I used to joke I had a friend who brought egg salad to, you know, to lunch yeah and it was smelly and you know yes. so you want to definitely be kind you know even if it's healthy always definitely right. take, that take that into that consideration into because yeah. it you know they may like it but they may not want to eat it for right. that reason right. that's a good point right so it'd be re reasonable in your expectation of what they're going to sit at the yeah. lunch table and eat absolutely given the environment and the absolutely. time that they have yeah um and yeah as you said portions are out of control yeah, you know, too much. So don't too much of anything. Um, they're not going to want to eat. So it's better to almost do you know one main, m you know, part of the meal, and just a couple little sides with it. Okay. You know, even a half a sandwich is good. Right. And then with a bunch of rather different rather than wasting a whole sandwich yeah. and a bunch of other stuff. Unless you ha have a child who you know is a really big eater, mm -hmm. but most likely um, they're going to eat about a half. Or you can just cut it and they can bring it back home with them. Right. So uh, another, so one of you, the tips that I you sort of slid in there was um, involve the kids. 
Oh, yeah, and definitely. And making it as well as planning. Well, and you know, everybody's lifestyle is different. In, in a perfect world, we'd all let our kids go pick our food. and you know. But, right. yes, if you can get them to go to the grocery store with you when you do go once a week or whatever, mm -hmm. um, talk with them beforehand so they don't run to the, you know, the prepackaged aisle and talk about the kind of foods that they really like and they like to see in their lunch boxes. And you'd be surprised. They do really know what healthy is and they do want to eat healthy mm -hmm. but sometimes it's just they're not quite sure what it is so um, bring them to the grocery store and let them pick stuff out and prepare it mm -hmm. um, they always like to eat what they make yeah. so if you can get something that they can cook or they can help chop or yeah right. and you can make it a ritual to have them do it the night before mm -hmm. so it takes the stress away from picking out the, I the snack I do think that's a good, that is a good tip is, but you have to really build it into your schedule you I'm do. Used to it's doing a lot it in the easier than. And it's stressful doing it. In the it's, <laughs> I won't do it. My, the rule it in my day. house is everyone's lunch is made and everyone's snack is packed for the next day. Um, and that, you're less likely to just grab something. Yes, right. You know, Easy. Right. And they're thinking right, about right, right. it and they know right. what they're having for snacks and they open it. It's not, oh, yeah. you know. So, a real, another thing that, that um, you had implied was realistic expectations so yeah. it may don't overwhelm yourself don't beat yourself up you can make up for after lunch or after school but also maybe it's just a step so maybe instead of X brand of cheese crackers you go to the more or organic right or less just ingredient what, that's brand. what I was just gonna say you've got mm -hmm. it the less ingredients the better um, if you can pronounce the ingredients that's great mm -hmm. um, and that's yeah, something sometimes you can do with step. your kids that read you can Absolutely. say, look at the box, can you pronounce mm -hmm. those things? Yeah. Do you and want to eat can't. that? <laughs> right. Maybe we don't want to eat them. Yeah. 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 And, you know, getting a little container um, so that it's portioned so that they're not eating um, a ton of it and then not being hungry for their lunch. Right. It's almost like a cycle. Right. Um, and, and sometimes. They fill up on the snack. Right. And sometimes some kids don't actually eat a whole, their whole snack, like you said. Mm -hmm. So if it's just a little bit of something that's maybe not their absolute favorite junk food, then they're going to have more room for lunch when they do eat their lunch. Right. So um, right. it ends up being healthier anyway. Right. Okay. So I, um, we, let's do our first recipe. Okay. Um, I, while I was doing research for this show, um, it's amazing I had to do research or how to find my kids, <laughs> but I did. I did a lot of research. Um, and I came across this book called Simple Food for Busy Families. And um, it's by Jeanette Bessinger and Tracy Yablon Brenner, and um, it's fabulous. It's fabulous for more. It's fabulous for home cooking as well. But um, what I'm going to do is a trail mix, which is great because the kids can pick the ingredients they put in it. There's just some guidelines. It's sort of like a, a road map of how right. to make it. So all you do, this is one that I like. So if you want to take the first okay. ingredient and sunflower seeds, sunflower seeds, a cup of Am I seeds. Throwing is, the whole yep. thing in. So you pick. You pick uh, a seed, um, and then also in the recipe is a cup of nuts. Now, I chose another seed mm -hmm. because this is going to be school friendly, and a lot That's of schools That's what I was just going to ask you. Yeah, so I, I picked my a second can't. seed instead of nuts. So these okay. are pepitas, which I think are Mexican um, pumpkin seeds. They sound hollow, yeah. Yeah, they they're, sound very, like pumpkin they're seeds. just crispy, crunchy. Okay. And then you want to do um, a half to three quarters of a cup of dried fruit. And what I did was instead of doing one dried fruit, I split it up. So okay. I have a half a cup of um, raisins. That was the, one of the dried fruits. And they're the enjoyed. golden raisins. The golden raisins. And I did a quarter of a cup of cranberries. Uh, cranberries. And then there are two extras you can add in, which is cereal, some sort of healthy cereal, like Kashi brand cereal. Um, you know, there's the bumpers. And these are actually Gorilla Munch. So that's a half a cup of cereal. Now, there's an option to add some <laughs> extra sweet stuff. And what I did was I did a quarter of a cup of um, the special, uh, excuse me, tropical source um, Sunspire chips. So they're a little bit of a healthier option um, for if you want to put chocolate or right. something really sweet into your, into your mix. Our rule in our house is that if you only eat the chocolate chips, then you don't get to you know, we don't make it that way anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we won't put the chocolate chips in. You have to eat the whole thing. And then you just mix it up, and that's it. 
Very nice. And you could probably prepackage these and yes, get them. Yes, once you have it done, it, it keeps for a long time, and then we just um, you know put it in individual containers Perfect. like that, and we send it to school. Put it in their snack drawer, yeah, and put it's it in their all snack, ready. And because it doesn't have nuts in it, they can have it in the classroom, which is great. And they love it. And the kids get to pick their ingredients. Each girl has their own container with their name oh, on it. Oh, that's good. And that's it. So that's our first... First that's recipe, fun. we are going to be back in a minute with a couple special guests and two more recipes. So we're back and we're ready to make blueberry muffins and we have two special guest chefs, Abby and Meg. Do you see the resemblance? Yes, they're mine. <laughs> And Suzanne does cooking classes um, with kids at the Little Green Tambourine, and this is one of the recipes. So you yes, wanna share with absolutely. Us what we're going to be doing? We are actually going to be making blueberry muffins, but I like to call them blueberry crumble cakes because they're Ooh. really, really good. Um, so they could be breakfast, they could be snack, they could be dessert, they could be whatever you want them to be. All right. So our first ingredient is going to be our flour, and here I've used unbleached regular flour. So are you ready? You're going to get this is a one half cup. A half a cup of flour. Yeah. I like to make it fun and not give them the three quarter of a cup so that they can actually um, do math. All right. Ready to dig in there? Don't worry about getting a little flour on the table. All right. Now we're going to take this. Can you reach it? Hold it. Yep. Perfect. Now you're going to level it over the bag and then dump it into our bowl. Okay. Ready? All right. Let's tap, tap. And now we need our quarter of a cup. Oh, so you do it's that a again. Total of three total quarters, of a cup. Three quarters okay. of a cup. So abs, you All do right. The, oh, is Meg doing the flour? Yeah, and then okay. you'll and then she'll do the oats. Okay. So okay, ready? The rest of the flour. Yep. There we go. I always tell my kids, don't worry about spilling a little flour. No. It's okay. We can just wrap Here. it up in the tablecloth and bring it home. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Woo! There we go. Of course, the adults make the most mess. But there we go. Okay, All so right. Three quarters. Of now, while you yep, three quarters of a cup. I'm going to put sure. the finished ingredients over here. So now we're going to do one third of a cup of oatmeal, and I like the quick oats. Right now, I'm using um, organic quick oats. So they're quick. So, okay. Yep. So take a big, nice scoop, and then kind of level it off. I like to shake it a little. Well, you probably want. Yeah. There, there you go. go. See. All right. You want to start mixing that up? Perfect. So All right. That was. That was one third of a cup. Third of a cup of. Oats. Yep. Quick oats. Quick oats. Does right. it, if you get the regular oats, does it mess it up? It's a little tougher. Okay. I like okay. the quick oats. The quick oats. All right, are you ready for the sugar? All right. One quarter of a cup of sugar. Go wrong in there. This is just Trader Joe's mm -hmm. organic okay, sugar. Right. It's so inexpensive, and that's all I use at the oh, studio because it's so good. And as I said, it's, it's not expensive. Right. Which so. is nice. Yes. All right. Now, we need our baking powder. So we need one half of a teaspoon of baking powder. This has its own leveler in it, okay? So take a nice scoop of that, and then level it. We always want to level over the table because we can't take it out of our Yes, of our I've bowl. done that before. Do oh, yeah. I know. I've done I've it many a time with vanilla. You That's baking the worst soda culprit. instead of baking powder. <laughs> mm. ah, yes, and we're being very careful. Out. Now you're going to do one quarter of a teaspoon of the baking soda. So right. it's a half of baking powder. Yep, half powder. of baking powder, and half of baking soda, and use that leveler. Half Perfect. of baking soda, okay. All right. Now you can both do this. You're both going to take a small pinch of salt, just like a little crab. There you go. Okay. Perfect. And that's just regular iodized Those, salt? Yeah, this is um, sea salt, actually. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. All right, she's mixed it all up. Guess what? That's it for our dry ingredients. So we're going to bring our other bowl, kind of set that aside. Okay, you guys ready? We're going to use a really strange ingredient that you're probably not used to using in baking. Applesauce. Okay. <laughs> yes, applesauce takes the place of the egg in this recipe. Now, who went last? Uh, I think it's your turn. Okay. Now, we're not going to worry about leveling it, so take a nice scoop of that. That's one tablespoon. So just that's a, good. a big, that's healthy good. tablespoon. Yep, that's perfect. Okay. All right. Now we need one-third. Yeah. One third of a cup. Would you mind handing that to us? Yeah, there's the cup. Okay. Perfect. I'll take that. Are you ready? We're going to add the milk. You want to hold on to it? All right. And then we're going to add that. So this is whole milk? Yeah, you know, I, Does it matter? I use... No. No, I mean, I use um, low fat, but since there's no butter and there's just a little bit of canola oil in it, I just yeah, go for the, just to go give for the whole milk. Richness. Yeah, just to Especially it's for, so it's it's a for kids. So it's a cake instead of a <laughs> Yes, <muffin. laughs> yes. Okay, canola oil. We're going to put two tablespoons. 
All right. This is drippy. Okay, one. Let's measure it over this just in yeah. case we spill. <laughs> ready? But I don't think you're going to spill. Perfect. All right, you ready to whisk? I'll take that. Okay, so that was two tablespoons. Two of tablespoons of canola oil. oil. Okay. And guess what? That's it for now. I know we're missing. So that's it. We're for missing the, the blueberries, but you right. never want to add them until after everything's all mixed, and okay. you'll see why. So the wet ingredients is just the applesauce, applesauce, the milk, and the canola. Yep. That's wow. It. And there's not really that much of it either. No, that's no. amazing. Okay. Now this is a recipe that's broken down to make um, about 16 mini mini um, muffins. Okay. Okay, so this isn't a huge batch. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right, someone gets to pour it in, and then the other person gets to do the blueberry muffin, the, add the blueberries. So who wants to pour it in? Okay, ready? We're going to use our spatula to get all of the wet ingredients out. Yeah, you don't want to miss yeah, any of that exactly. since there isn't that much. There we go. Perfect. All right. Abby, why don't you mix that? And then Meg will mix it, and then we'll get ready for our blueberries. I use um, flash frozen blueberries. Okay. And these are from Trader Joe's, and I love them because they're little. You want to use the, oh the smaller blueberries when you're okay. making mini, mini um, I want to say cupcakes. They're that good. Um, mini muffins because it just, they're just the perfect size. Okay. Okay? And I do let them defrost. And you kind do? of let them, okay. Yes, I do let them defrost. Okay. Do you put them One in third. flour at all before you put them in? I don't. You don't? Okay. No, no. I mean, because I don't mind purple muffins. Right. It's pretty. I like them. Yeah. It adds flavor. All right, so I'm going to very carefully try to scoop these out without spilling them everywhere. All right. Are you ready? So do we want to, can we just do it, get a yep. quick shot of the, so it's a pretty thick. It's nice thick, and thick. Nice um, and thick. It's a pretty thick dough. So I think it's going to take some elbow grease girls to get those blueberries mixed into yeah. the. Yeah, let me just do one more scrape. Oh, this is perfect. Yep. As I say, I like it to be a little bit purple, and you'll see in our finished product mm -hmm. what it looks like. All right, you ready to dump it in? Mm -hmm. All right. There you go. So that was just a kind third of fold the of one a third cup. of a cup. Okay. Now you can add more or less. Um, you don't okay. want to add too too much more because we do want these to be like a crumble cake consistency. Um, okay. And these are yep. And these are really easy. It's almost like cookie batter when you put them in the um, in the little cups, it's really easy to get them in. They're not oh, gooey or anything. Okay. So it doesn't drip when you no, just go no. to scoop it in. That's nice. No. <laughs> look how yummy that is. Top. Doesn't that look good? Yeah. Do you guys want to taste a little bit of the batter? Okay. Because since we didn't put eggs in it, you can We don't like batter can try in our house, it. do we? <laughs> All right. Let's see. Go for it. Take a little pinch. You can use your finger. That's yeah. Right. This is good. Isn't that yummy? No, they're not too, too sweet, and they're Good. just the perfect okay, amount of sweet. I get to sweet. take a taste. And the oatmeal um, really, mm. Ooh, really like good. a comfort food. Mm -hmm. Very good. good. Should oh. we show them what they look like when they're done? You want to grab those? Ta-da! Why don't you grab Beautiful. them while we're holding? Okay. Yep. So Let's you see. lined the pans with the cups? With the mini, yep, mini, mini okay. cupcake liners. Now, and then I call them crumble cakes because... They're going to make a mess? Well, no, not no. really. But they are soft. They're very they soft. are. They oh, are. Oh, Aren't they really good? Good? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then I would probably, mm. for a snack, oh, I would do good. two. So you could send these a snack. You could send them yeah, with your lunch. Yeah, it depends on what you send it with. If you send Excellent. it with, you know, milk, then mm -hmm. you would just do one. Maybe that one would be right. fine. Excellent. Perfect. So blueberry crumbles. And can you change the fruit? You can change the fruit, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would just substitute it with, you know, again, the raspberries, but they'll smush, but that's right. okay, right? That's okay. We don't mind having okay. purple, mm -hmm. purple cupcake Excellent. muffins. So girls, right. thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up. Thumbs All up. Right. Excellent. We'll be back in a minute to do some uh, unusual take on mini pizzas. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are back with our third and final recipe, and this is one that's kind of thinking a little bit outside of the box and taking kind of a traditional recipe and making it lunchbox friendly. So why don't you share with us okay. what we're going to be doing. Perfect. The girls are kneading dough. Can I see your dough for a second? Okay, this dough is actually, um, it's an original recipe. It has flour, yeast, water, salt, and then another mystery ingredient that gives it sweetness. It's called agave. Okay. It's going to give it just a little bit of a, a little bit of a sweetness, but not so sweet that you're not going to want to put pizza stuff on it. 
Okay. And agave so, is a liquid. Um, it's like nectar almost. It isn't is. It? And yeah. it comes in a bottle. Yeah, I know it's, you can get it it's at less Joe's processed. I do get yeah. the organic um, agave at Trader Joe's, and mm -hmm. it's very, again, okay. very inexpensive. I love that. So basically, they've been kneading it for a while. You're going to take it with your hands and make a pizza shape. I have some mm -hmm. already baked, so you want to go for something like this. Sometimes I roll mine out really, really, really uh -huh. um, flat, yeah. but they don't have okay. to. Okay. So use your muscles, girls. Come Perfect. On. Push it, push it. Pick them up and just <laughs> pull them. All right, and we'll pretend to put them in the oven. Okay, I have my oven right, right down no, here, so put it on your pan. Let's put them in the oven. You can even do them like that, too, but keep in mind, the topping is going to be about, so <laughs> it'll be about thick, that much room. It's almost like a hamburger yeah? bun. Yeah. All right, let's pretend to put them in the oven. I'm going to put it in the oven right now. Okay. Okay. okay, well, what we're going to do with our... Oh, you're going to use the thing. Okay. Yeah, we flip them over. Flip them over. See, oh, now we don't have to clean them. Oh, well, we'll have to clean them eventually. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick out a couple vegetables. Okay. So we have an assortment of vegetables here that you can put on top. We do, and they all taste good with cream cheese because our base is um, a little unique. It's half cream cheese and half hummus. Just the regular hummus, nothing crazy. Don't okay, get no any, flavored hummus. No, um, okay. not initially. Once okay. they once they realize that it tastes really good, then you can start okay. to experiment. Okay. And is it whipped um, cream cheese or just? It is. Cream it cheese? is. Okay. I went to Whole Foods and I just got a thing of, of whipped um, okay. cream cheese, and so it blends nicely. So half cream cheese, half, half plain hummus. old hummus. Yep. Okay. Yep. And that's so. instead of sauce. Exactly. Right. Okay. Exactly. And okay. instead of all cream cheese, they're getting a little bit of the yep. hummus. So you get okay. Some so why don't you take just a couple vegetables, whatever you like. Cucumbers. Who doesn't love cucumbers with, with um, cream cheese? We've got some peas here. Uh, yellow peppers. We like. The, remember the we talked about the rainbow. Mm -hmm. um, red this is peppers. a nice rainbow. We have a pretty it rainbow is. Going here. Um, and there's a lot of creative things you can do with it. They can make faces. Um, they can make animals. I think we made a penguin once. My daughter and I made a penguin <sighs> with olives. Um, and now are they okay. supposed to be chopping? Start chopping them up. And okay. what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a plate. And, and the carrots are already pre-shredded. Yes, that's key so um, because I like them to be able to cut. And, um, right. These and they're just manageable. They're yep. not too, exactly. too uh, crunchy, crunchy. Right. How big are we okay. supposed to cut them? Like As any size you want. So that's perfect. Little, little pieces. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in front of you. You don't have to be rust chopping, but this is what we're going to spread. So this is a finished room. pizza shell. This is in a nice oval shape. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So if you do it as pretzels, you can just shape it as a pretzel. You can. Okay. You can Absolutely. do it in twist and in sticks, and then you can dip it. Right. Right. Yep. And I made um, one here, so I'm going to start because they're chopping. Maybe okay. I can borrow some of their vegetables. What do you think? Mm -hmm. They'll give me some. Okay. So I really like hummus and cream cheese, so I'm going to kind of do this. So you just mm. spread it. Right just on spread top. it on. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. I'll do this one too. All right, now, is you this guys something you can do the night before, or do you need to you can. assemble you it? You can. You can do it the night before. Okay. Not more than one night before, just because you don't want it to get soggy. soggy. Okay. Um, and actually, I'll show you a trick to how to transport it. Okay. So it's not open. Okay. Okay. So are you ready, girls? I'm going to put a little dot on here. How's that? That amount? Good. And I'll let you spread it with your knife. <gasps> are you ready? You want to do it? Sure. All right. You can use your knife to kind of get it off the spatula. Okay. There you go. Perfect. I do nice. also have a little bit of Parmesan cheese to put on top, just a little bit. Okay. And yes. that kind of adds a little bit of saltiness to it. Oh, no. That's Oops. okay. Look. That's okay. Oh. Da -da -da. oh, and it didn't even land in the cream cheese. That's awesome. Okay. All right. So we'll just have <laughs> this as our. <laughs> Does anybody have a dog? That's all right. All right. No problem. I really need a cucumber. Would you hand me a cucumber, please? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. All right, and then what you're going to do is, oh, I'm going to use this. You're going to arrange your vegetables any way you want. I could make it like so take your veggies. Shark infested waters over here. Can you put <laughs> before I do yeah, you can use, feel free to use your fingers. Sprinkle it on. Okay, so this is there a little bit of grated Parmesan. Yeah. All right, now you're ready to. Put your toppings on. You can cut those if you want, mm -hmm. or you can leave them big. Ooh, very nice. Beautiful. All right. Do you mind so, passing me tomato? Sure. So awesome. how, what is the trick to transporting? Okay. The trick to transporting is if they'll let you, <laughs> you want to cut them in half. Okay. Okay. And then you want to kind of fold them over. Oh, okay. So that way you So don't. then they become little quesadilla pizzas. 
Okay. And I'll then I would that. use a plastic container or a um, stainless steel container for this. Okay. Um, unless if you do just a thin layer. I've, I have put these in re Okay. Um, well, because like it is lined. Yeah, these are very um, But, you know, you want to go easy with the cream cheese when you do it that okay. way. Okay. So, yeah. So, if you put it in something where the cream cheese could get mushed. Yeah. Just light it And it's no big deal because it's washable, right. but, you know. Look at my and the, Oh, that's beautiful. beautiful. So the resnackets are a reusable lunch bag. You can use reusable plastic containers. There's yeah. all sorts of options. It adds to the fun too, um, especially for um, you know when you're just trying to spice up snack. Right. You know, it's so. a fun container. Yeah. So do you girls want to hold up your finished products here? So if you hold it, hold the bottom like that. So you can do pretty designs. You can add all sorts of. Yeah. You can add peas. Anything. You could put corn on it. You know, uh -huh. you just have them taste it beforehand. You know, right. I don't know. Cream cheese and corn might taste really good. Right. I don't know. And you could even just use the mix as a dip. You could. You could use it mm -hmm. as a dip. They could eat it if they didn't, if they weren't mm -hmm. in the mood for vegetables that day. At least this has some, mm -hmm. you know, chickpeas in it. And Maybe you could put the vegetables in that and then dip the. Dip the That's bread. Really you could do that you too. Could do that. That's oh, you, you could, could make like um, like a veggie dip. Right. Yeah. Right. And then, right. Put the yeah, that and then you great. have some. Um, Another option to get some I do. I love these. I figured you guys might be thirsty. And um, these are great um, when you just yeah, didn't cut these while you have okay. time to pack snack. These are great. Put it in a little uh, lunch box. And this is a snack. You don't cook it. And this is not cooked. Abby's reminding me. So yeah. once you spread your stuff on there, you're done. Oh, not yeah. Cooked. No, no need to cook them. All right. we've, um, I've baked, excuse me, I baked the shell for five okay. minutes on each side because they puff up like pillows. They're actually really okay. fun to watch cook. So you'd have to bake the shell. Bake the shell for five minutes, flip it over another five minutes, pull them out. They, they cool down in like two seconds. This is really good. Do you like okay. it? Yeah. Why don't you try it's your It's really piece? easy and you can taste the agave in there a little bit, right? Just the right amount of sweetness. Well, we are out of time, but I think we've covered a lot of great suggestions for snacks and options. Um, if you want to get some more ideas, there's a lot more that we didn't cover. Um, you can always contact Suzanne at the Little Green Tambourine. Is your website the best way to get in touch with yep, you? Yep, thelittlegreentambourine.com. Okay, and um, I have some recipes that I'm going to post on my Facebook page to share with you. Um, so the main thing is just, you know, baby steps. You know, try and get your kids involved. Obviously, it's a lot of fun. Just pull it. You've been okay. watching Life and Style with Sarah. Suzanne, thank you for joining thank you. me. Thank you, guys. And don't forget, oh, and thank you, Meg and Abby, for joining <laughs> us, for helping. Don't forget to tune in next month to a brand new episode of Life and Style. Maureen Hazley Jones, the English lady, is going to be joining me, and we're going to be on location planting a vegetable garden. Thanks, and good night.